So we're uh, cutting back the plastic, our Alaskan walls here. We're gonna remove the insulation. Oh, I don't miss working with this. Ooh. And uh, we're going to be installing a drain pipe, finally. <laughs> For the past eight months, we've been draining our pipes into the black plastic bins. So anything done in the sink, the, the hand laundry and the dishes. And then we dump those black bins into a bucket to carry outside. And that has been the way for the past eight months. And uh, we're really tired of it. It's very time consuming, very stinky, and there's a lot of opportunity for disaster. <laughs> So today we are going to be putting in a drain pipe. Should I have done this outside? Oh, there we go. <laughs> So this is our drain pipe for the house. We put some gravel down to help with drainage. And this is just a temporary thing until winter time. And then we'll have to remove the system because the water will inevitably freeze when it's negative 30 below. So then we'll go back to buckets, but we won't be having to carry them far because we can just put them in the uh, spigot area that you've made or the, the drainage yeah. pipe. That yeah, it's <laughs> not optimal, but it is what it is now. Mm -hmm. And this is way better than having yeah. to cart the buckets down and this is a huge quality of life improvement. oh yeah and yeah. time time saving time too. saver yeah cool i'm going to clean this coop out today and get some new hay or straw in there and probably build another little area for temporary structure for some other chicks that we're raising. Uh, we've had to buy in some chicks just to uh, try to get some more roosters going so that we can have our flock kind of take care of itself and make new chicks. That way we don't have to keep buying chicks in every year. So we're gonna start doing that.
I've laid the groundwork for the potato bed and I kind of used the existing landscape. These had a bunch of beetle kill trees in it and uh, we took them down. So I've done a lasagna method where I've added cardboard to the bottom and then I put topsoil on top. Now I'm going to put um, buckets of a soil blend on top including compost and a little lime on top of the topsoil. And then I plant my potato on top of that and then mound more garden blend soil on top of that. And then I'll keep mounding as the stock comes up. So yeah, this took a lot of uh, work to get the soil through because I'm not, I'm having to go through the forest <laughs> to get the soil here. But I'll show you right there. I've just put you some trees as kind of a border and then I've got cardboard here. It's all underneath there. I'm hoping the cardboard from the moving boxes does better here than it did for actually moving our stuff. These boxes I would never purchase again for moving, but that's besides the point. So I'm hoping they, they break down okay. So yeah, cut in half and we put here to dry for the night. Hey, you want to come discuss this with us? The potato discussion. Are you okay? Yeah. I just cut that off on accident, I think. Or it fell off. I'll plant them though. So Richard, do you want to tell our viewers about curing? And it's not Robert Smith. Just when you when you cut it in half and let it sit, it's going to form kind of a skin over that. And as Amy said, it helps prevent early rot. And then you get an extra seed potato out of the deal. And we got a number of different species too because we like potatoes a lot. It is probably my favorite food. Anything and else? And we are using like all of our stuff to uh, put them in. Like if you go over by the wood stove, <laughs> there's these potatoes. potatoes. These are all potatoes. These are all potatoes. So that is how many potatoes there are, which is a lot of potatoes. Yeah, a week's worth. <laughs> a week's worth of potatoes. Is there anything you wanna else you wanna tell us about potatoes, Leon? What's your favorite type? Or the, the favorite way to eat a potato? Probably the way that you made it that one time, Daddy, and where I asked for more. Wait a minute, was it my potatoes? <gasps> no, it was not. What? Like, hmm. like we had pico. You guys had pico de gallo with them, but yeah, I yeah, that was potatoes. that was last night. Yeah, Dad made really good potatoes last yeah, night. Yeah, those are the ones I like. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna plant the dark red Norland potatoes here. Gonna give them about 18 inches of grow space between potatoes.
potatoes are really easy to grow. They're really resilient and they're, they're great store crops too. So you can store them for long-term use in a cool, dark place. And they're, they are a reason, good reason we have survived for so long. Got here, um, but I've talked to people who are struggling to find seed potatoes. So my suggestion to them is if you can find organic potatoes and uh, plant those out just as you would seed potatoes. Um, the regular potatoes generally are sprayed with something that inhibits growth that just makes them last longer, but it does, you know, prevent them from growing. But if you have a potato that has eyes on it, I would try to plant it. The worst that can happen is it doesn't pan out and you've just lost a little bit of time. And now I'm just going to cover these up with about an inch of soil and I'll keep mounding them. So you can see there's some surface mold on here and that's that's okay so this is what an asparagus crown looks like and I dug this trench about six inches deep and I'm gonna spread these crowns out I'm digging six inches deep the trench and trying to push it out and I'm gonna put this pointing up and the root system here I'm spreading out and then I'm burying the root system about two inches and then as that pokes up you're gonna you're gonna add more soil to the trench So I have two new species here called Aronia. It's also known as chokeberry and it's called that because when you eat the fruits it, it makes you want to choke. But it's supposed to be really good for jams and jellies and juice and wine. So I'm going to try it and it's rated for our zone, zone three. So I have two different species. Uh, two different breeds of it. I have a Nero and a Viking. And it's good to have different breeds too for um, cross-pollination. So I've got both and I'm gonna try it. I don't know how long it's gonna take to uh, be fruitful. I didn't do much research on this, which I know drives Richard a little bonkers, but I figure I'll figure it out. Okay, so the Viking chokeberry is supposed to get six to ten feet long and wide, and the Nero is supposed to get three to six feet long and wide as well, and they're bushes. For the past couple months, I've had to um, 
move these six plants in and out of the Connex container um, because I haven't planted them and I haven't planted them because I we wanted to build a fence so the moose didn't eat our plants. So today though I'm planting um, two of the things that I've been taking in and out and that would be the honey berries and I'm very excited that two less plants I have to take in and out of there. We're gonna plant those over in our berry patch. Honey berries are part of the honeysuckle family and they do really well in the zones up here. I know this one is a tundra the other one that I have, I do not know what it is. I got it at a nursery and they didn't, they didn't, the person I talked to didn't know what it was. So um, I figured I'd research it and I still haven't done that. So we'll figure that out. But they look, they look to have different leaves. So I'm really hopeful. Oh, the mosquitoes are crazy. <laughs> there is the uh, honeybee hascap berry. So I'm very excited for this plant. After you plant any plant or start, you want to make sure and give it a good watering. I'm going to really saturate this area so that it starts growing.